The internet can be your window to the world or an open door that lets cyber criminals in. Online theft, webcam spying, and identity fraud are all on the rise. But you can stay safe with Kaspersky Lab, the world's most awarded internet security. Kaspersky protects your money, privacy, identity, and data with technology perfected over 20 years. So keep exploring. Kaspersky Lab will keep you safe online. Learn more at Kaspersky.com. Okay, all right. This is how I always start, the, always the second half of the, uh, the second episode. But sometimes we air this one f- first, which makes zero sense. Throws everyone off. So No, we'll air the first one first. Yeah, we'll air the first one. Yeah. Uh, rejoining us is uh, Patrick Haggerty, Matt Marin, and uh, An- um, Matteo. I almost called him Angelo. Angelo? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the Angelo from your joke. Because his, his middle name's Angelo. It is. Which is, uh, which is remarkable. Yeah. Who gave you that name? Noam Chomsky? Mate- <laughs> Mateo Angelo Pascal. I've never heard uh, someone's middle name described as remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> Strange adjective. I think it's, am- I think it's amazing. <laughs> you have a remarkable middle name. It's well, fucking amazing. Say, about to say that to a girl on a first date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your, your middle name is Marie. Oh, wow. Another one? Wow, that's remarkable. Well, every, every Angelo I met was always like a short, fat guy. Like, and uh, mm. Mateo's this uh, strapping young man, according to Mateo. <laughs> according to Mateo. <laughs> he goes up at Mike's. He, he's like, I'm, I know I'm attractive. And- I'm classically handsome. <laughs> I don't think it. Women tell me it constantly. <laughs> Did, did they it, don't just tell him it. They tell him it constantly. Constantly. <laughs> You're classically handsome. You're classically handsome. Oh, uh, how, what do they? How do they tell you? I don't know. I'm just, just what's the context? It's like they always like slip it in. Like it's like weird. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They slip it in. They slip hey, it in. hey, could you tell me how to get to this museum? You classically handsome <laughs> man. <laughs> Wow, you really slipped that one in, lady. <laughs> Noam Chomsky tells him all the time. Yeah. So is that, is that, is that uh, cash or debit you're handing the waiter, classically handsome man? <laughs> oh, don't bring that shit up. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. Excuse me, sir. Can I get you another drink, you classically handsome man? <laughs> the joke is I don't ever carry cash on me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is a joke. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you picked yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> He was being carried by the ambulance. Mateo used to go to dinner, uh, used to go to l- on lunch dates with like five female comics yeah. at a time. I still do sometimes. Oh, you yeah, still, still do? do, do yeah. What do you guys talk about other than you being classically handsome? <laughs> 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 not much else. Not much else. They're just fucking bullshit. And like talk to like, just like fucking to, like spew garbage out. Like just like if it's their day and week. Just, so, who oh, you, so it's like sitting to their act. <laughs> who do you go out with? Who's the girl? Who are the girls? I'm not telling you. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, I know Claire Parker, right? <laughs> right, Claire Parker. That actually was gonna be my first guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chloe McGovern, right? No, that's oh, that's a good that's, one. That's an that's mm-hmm. asterisk right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, Chloe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That she's a woman, uh, you mean? No, I'll tell you uh, later. Oh, something. Right, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We won't get into that. Oh, yeah. whatever. I don't uh, yeah, but who else? Um, who else? What's the other one that you... It's, I'm, I'm, why the fuck you have to bring this up? Why are you putting a gun to my head? Aren't, aren't you the ones who brought this up? You're, you're going out to lunch with them. It's not like you're doing Yeah, that. yeah. We're not, you know, you're not doing lines. We're not head. all going to be like outside with binoculars. <laughs> right. yeah. so like, Mateo, how could you? Uh, I told you you were classically handsome. How could you do that? Hannah I Gatsby. told you that in confidence. <laughs> Hannah Gatsby. You take these girls to Jersey Mike's and... Uh... Yeah, the, the subway shop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Get a we'll couple of on. heroes. We'll move, oh, yeah, we'll move, we'll move on. on for the sake of Mateo. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Gets a, he has a few dates. Everyone makes fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he doesn't go on dates because like you're gonna hear my fucking jerk off voice. Date. I don't think we're not doing anything romantic. I, I would call them dates if I were you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, they're dates. Okay. Yeah, they, you, Did you, you know? imagine if you were going around calling them dates? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I went on a date with five separate uh, female comics at the same time. <laughs> they were all at an Applebee's table together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I paid. <laughs> I cannot imagine you- Claire Parker in an Applebee's. <laughs> yeah, as the waitress, maybe. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, Matt's here, and Matt's, Matt was a wrestler, which is... A, which, yes. Which, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's remarkable. <laughs> I always, when I first met you, I was like, this guy looks like Crush from wrestling. Yeah. 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 Crush. <laughs> I was like, he looks like Crush. And then I confused you with Eddie Fat. Carol, actually, and the two, oh, you, yeah. the two you guys kind of look alike. Yeah, mm. but yeah, and, uh, don't ever say that to me again. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's like the top roaster in the city. He's got very thick skin. Do not compare him to Eddie Farrell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't just work at one bar yeah. and produce the same show with Rachel Joan on every lineup. <laughs> That's, that's why they enjoy us a lot. <laughs> I remember I hosted a show at Old Man Hustle once, and it was just like 
no waking the crowd up. I mean, <laughs> crowd, if you can call it a crowd. <laughs> and I ended my, ho- I was hosting, I ended by saying, thank you guys very much. You've been a great crowd. That's not true. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> When did you start wrestling? Young? Um, yeah, well, so pro wrestling, I started I was like 17. Wow. Um, I did amateur wrestling, like Greco-Roman summer t- summer tournaments uh, when I was like 12 or oh, so. Oh, high school. Um, it was, uh, so my high schools didn't have a team. Yeah. So I would, uh, one of my friend's high schools did, and they did like a summer program, and I yeah. was able to go in as a walk-on. Oh, and ooh. so I entered the summer tournaments uh, for three years, and uh, I, it was like to determine rankings or help for the year. So that my third year, I actually got into the rankings. Things, but I was NA because I wasn't associated with the school. I just like wanted to wrestle. No, I, I can really. I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There's nothing funny on South Park when uh, the episode. Oh, yeah, the gay thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but, like, not the, but the, like, the, why are you showing me this gay sex? <laughs> 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 now they just think it's like wrestling, wrestling. You know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I, I mean, I played every sport and it was just unathletic. Which um, I'm now finding I was uncoordinated. Mm. Which I'm now finding out was because apparently I had a giant clump of blood vessels <laughs> in my brain my entire not life and fault. never knew. I, I don't want to offend you, but did you ever play soccer or something like? Never soccer, actually. How would that be no, offensive? not really. Why would, yeah, why would that be offensive? <laughs> <laughs> Only pussies play soccer. Everyone knows that. <laughs> no, I, baseball was my main sport. Um, and I remember they once they had tryouts, it was like, oh, I may not be able to make a team now. Yeah. But there were only 10 catchers trying out and 12 teams. So I became a catcher so I could still make a team. Right. Now I like, learned how to call pitches. I always had to do something because I wasn't athletic enough on my own. I was like... Yeah, um, catchers aren't athletic. I'm not, I'm not a big yeah. fan of catchers. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, but yeah, basketball, I was like, I was good. I was played inside. I was tall. But then you get to high school and like 6'2", is tall but not basketball yeah. tall. Yeah. Well, oh, usually yeah. the, the uh, like if you're six four in high school, you'd like the center. Like yeah. The JV. yeah. Well, I was like six two, so in like well, I mean six two now. I was like I was one of the taller kids, so I played like big man. But then like yeah, I played in a Jewish uh, basketball league in high school because uh, I was still tall compared to them. <laughs> Dylan Patanzas played basketball at Grand Street. Really? Yeah, 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 basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was terrible. Yeah. But he was he was so Six, tall eight, yeah. that he was still dominating. Yeah. Well, you right. said you weren't like athletic, but like you like you were really good at fighting in general. Like where's the cross between? So well once I got into well, fighting and wrestling in general, that's uh it's not as much like being athletic will give you an advantage, but a lot of it is like grit. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. And like every sport I played, I was not athletic enough to I couldn't throw the ball to second base yeah. as a catcher. Yeah. But I broke my finger once in the middle of a game because my finger was outside the glove, went into the dirt oh, and put it right back in the glove and just kept catching on it because I didn't want to take it taken out of the game. To this day, I put my hand down, my index finger oh. comes up on its own. Yeah, um, fingers my middle fingers up. are crooked. I mean, I got like a dent near the top of this finger. I've broken almost all my fingers because yeah. every sport I played, that was like I was the tough one. Is, I'd is, go head first is, into everything. I know for a fact it's like certain like Olympic wrestling, like yeah. scenarios for wrestling, it's still legal to break fingers. Yeah, I've bro- um, a couple of times I've broken fingers in like amateur wrestling bouts. Yeah, um, no, I'm saying like there's like, like in Olympics, it says you can break the person's fingers. Oh, legally you can? Well, I don't certain, know about certain, it. Certain maneuvers in certain, certain like regulation countries. Maybe, yeah. I never yeah. played. Where you, like, you can't you, like bend them backwards. No, 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 yeah, no, like, no. There's like a rule. Like, you can like snap them as like a, like a point thing. Ooh, I haven't heard about that. I've learned. What I learned. Shit is that? Yeah. I, they do it in Greece and uh, like uh, like uh, like the former Balkan Yugoslavian countries. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah, I did learn joint manipulation in like martial arts classes yeah. I've done, but that was it was never legal in any kind of tournament. Yeah, like, like, yeah you know, that, that's gr- when you're fighting on the street and you, yeah. Yeah, you need like, to get the fuck I out know of there. It's like legal like Greece, Romania, Russia. It's legal to like break fingers in certain ways in fighting. Break your thumbs. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're just watching uh, Goodfellas. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they cut the shit off. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, I played roller hockey for some. My summer camp had an ice hockey, not ice, a roller, roller rink, hockey, and yeah. they and I played goalie because I was playing catcher and I was the only kid yeah. who wouldn't move out of the way when the puck got shot yeah, at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got like smacked in the face. They had like the Jason Voorhees style mask, so right, my right. chin was kind of unprotected. <laughs> and I had like <laughs> that's Michael Myers. <laughs> That's Michael Myers. That's fucking. So he's talking, fucking Matt's talking about Jason Voorhees and Mateo's doing the theme from Halloween. <laughs> Mateo and Zombie yeah, are dumb shit. Mateo and Zombie are natural rivals. <laughs> yeah. but everything we've said, Zombie's offended by the fact you picked the wrong murderer. <laughs> But yeah, so every sport I played, I would get injured, and that was like my key to the team. So once I got into like wrestling, martial arts, and pro wrestling, it's yeah. all about toughness. It's, yeah, it's and a, if you're like willing to be tough and carry on, you are 
you can be relatively successful. Right, like yeah. it took me longer in pro. Re- so one of my amateur wrestling buddies was his older brother did these pro shows, and I hadn't done amateur wrestling in a couple years because um, I did a ju- I had done judo before that. I did a judo move that's illegal in am- in Greco Roman wrestling, okay. and well, it's it, a leg sweep. Yeah, that's what um, and in Greco Roman wrestling, it's waist up only. Sweep the leg. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and but the guy flipped backwards and hit the back of his head and like sprained his neck. Oh. He ended Ooh. up being ended up being fine. But they said that it was now too dangerous to have walk-ons who weren't training with the team. Well, I guess you had your comeuppance for hurt, hurting someone's head. I guess. Comes around, comes around, bitch. Yeah. Karma is a bitch. I actually got booed too in amateur wrestling with like families and stuff because there was a kid who was like won the tournament the year before, and he was in my, I was tall and skinny, so yeah. I was like taller than everyone in my weight class, and I learned how to use reach advantage, mm. and I beat the kid who was like short and stocky, but everyone loved him, and I was like new and got booed by. All these families. <laughs> how, how does that feel? <laughs> well, at first it was like I was surprised. I've never seen anyone booed at like a family wrestling I, thing. I, no one has ever been a heel in high school wrestling. No, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But I, event, I just use it for motivation. I was like, if they boo me now, they're gonna boo me when I win the whole thing. That's you hilarious. know, we, we grew up playing baseball and. Uh, like no, I've never seen anyone booed. Yeah, I saw like you know a couple of Dominican kids used to get into stuff, but uh, yeah. you know, but they played dirty. I mean, um, I kind of tra- yeah. I kind of trash talk too. That like, after I beat the kid, I was like, "Yeah, you won the tournament last year, huh?" Like something <laughs> like really? that. Well, I think I'm. Tra- I don't remember now if the booing started before or after that. That's <laughs> but, hilarious. But I was I, I was a shit talker. Well, you were you were a big wrestling fan, uh, pro you know, exactly. Yeah. Fan, WWE. Well, when I first went to do it, my fr- I was doing judo classes with an after school program, yeah. and then one of those kids was doing wrestling, and my parents banned me from watching. Watching WWE because they didn't want me to try any of it. So when my friend said he would wrestle. I was I was secretive about it, and I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go wrestle," but I can't tell my parents like what I'm doing. And it was all just mats on the floor. I was like, "Where's the ring and the chairs?" It is funny growing up in the uh, late '90s, early 2000s. Your parents never wanted you to watch three things. South Park was one, right? That was one that was like you can't definitely watch, South Park, right? Me, yeah. Then wrestling, they were well wrestling. They let you watch it a little bit. What the hell was that? Uh, that was my parents saying, like, fuck you guys, don't watch that show. <laughs> yeah, just and a reminder. <laughs> Jackass was one yeah. Yeah. that you couldn't watch because they felt that you would go out and, like... I think my parents let me watch South Park just because they already banned me from watching wrestling. They didn't want to be too... St- like, we're not going to yeah, ban yeah, you from watching this thing also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wrestling was the one... But my dad yeah. liked South Park, and that was why. Oh, my, really? pa- my dad thought wrestling was stupid. My, <laughs> so. my dad grew up watching, you know, wrestling in the 70s and 80s, and uh, he didn't like the, the mid-90s wrestling, which I think was the greatest era of wrestling. You had WCW and WWF. Yeah, right. And he hated Stone Cold because he used to give the middle finger. He thought that was classy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he approved of the beer drinking. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, it, when did yeah, John Cena come on the scene? That was mid-2000. Yeah. 2003. That's when I stopped. Yeah. That's when I stopped watching. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of tuned out after him, too. Well, I, I like I, John Cena, though. I remember Chris Jericho won the title in 2001, and I remember that being when my, around when my parents told me I couldn't watch anymore because right. I loved Chris Jericho, <laughs> and I was so excited he won, and I was upset that I couldn't watch anymore. But I also didn't watch – I only watched SmackDown because I didn't have cable. Uh-huh. And Jer- so Jericho – it was Jericho and Undertaker were my guys. Yeah. Um, Undertaker was like my favorite, but it was like, you know, I'm not seven feet tall. I'm right. not the dead man. Jericho was like the guy I could be. I want – yeah. like, I want – What's your rival? T and something? T and – TNA? Oh, TNA. Yeah. That's another company. Yeah, but do you watch at all? I have. I haven't watched in a while. Okay. It would be funny if Chris Jericho runs for president in 2020. And Donald Trump gets the no, wall no, built no, before that's, then. That's a funny story. Uh, Jesse Ventura said you're right. Right, because let's tell a serious story. Well, I'm about to tell a Rob, fucking Rob, joke. It's <laughs> <laughs> a shit. Hey, Rob, Rob number one is talking, right? Rob number two. So we got, <laughs> let's give Rob number one the. Yeah, he's going to break the walls down, okay? All right, fuck. Uh, that's good. The walls of Jericho. Okay, all right. I was waiting for I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. This, this, oh, this will be easier if it's just me, you, yeah. and Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then uh, my buddy, we would go to his older brother's pro wrestling shows up in like New Rochelle and upstate yeah. and these different white planes and uh, we would set up the ring beforehand and if we set it up early enough they would let us get in the ring and mess around like stay out there how to supervise old, how old us at this point? 16, 17 oh, so like really well so I started watching again in high school because Matt Stryker was my social studies teacher who's that? he's one of the announcers in WWE he wrestled right. for a little while then became an announcer I know that name for but yeah I, he was our teacher and we knew he wrestled he was like on TV for like a one off appearance losing to Kurt Angle and we all made fun of him in class for losing <laughs> <laughs> and then uh I, and I remember he got fired over like February vacation, the president's week. He came he back. Fired. Well, because he used his like sick days uh, for wrestling in uh, Japan. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was supposed to be personal days, something like that. But yeah. he um, he was on Good Morning America that summer telling the story. It became a national story. 
Right. My parents told me about it, and he was going to be, uh, he's hired by WWE. Yeah. And we start watching, he's doing a teacher character. He's in the ring telling everyone <laughs> that they could be smarter if they just apply themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and Carlito, the Caribbean guy, comes up with yeah, an yeah, apple, yeah. Apple, yeah. bites his apple, and spits in my teacher's face because he's not cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> and uh, me and my brother started watching it. My dad said he trusts me to watch because he's pretty sure I'm old enough and mature enough. I won't try any of this. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, 16. Yeah. Then you become a pro wrestler. And then, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I start going to these shows. <laughs> and I dad's like, con- let him watch. Yeah. Two I weeks st- later, dad, I'm, I'm a wrestler. Were you, yeah. were you ever a fan of the video game franchises or the WWE? Uh, um, I played the video games, yeah. Okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, well come on. <laughs> wow, these are some really hard-hitting questions. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I started going to these shows, being on the microphone before the match, imitating my favorite guys and they told me I had good mic skills which I didn't know what that meant yeah that's important that yeah day. and then they would oh, they wanted yeah. me to like talk up people as they were walking in kind yeah. of doing warm up I didn't know what warm up was but yeah. I always wanted to be the bad guy so yeah. I just started insulting people as they came in <laughs> yeah. they're like that we're giving this opportunity I'm like look at this fat ugly guy coming in <laughs> and, and they're like maybe we'll um they said and I wanted to be a wrestler at that right. point and they said um all right we'll put you in a class there's a show coming up and we can get a spot for you on the show they said there was one spot to fill they put me in a class like 10 other people. I'm still, I'm the same height I am now, 6'1", 6'2", but yeah. 160 pounds, super skinny. Yeah. And the training is five-mile run. Well, you, wi- you were like wiry probably. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a five-mile run. After the first two miles, they give us a book bag with like 20-pound weights in it to run. Yeah. Last mile was just off the track, up a hill. I don't even think it was a full mile. They put us in a room like, before you leave, 250 push-ups, 500 squats, and 1,000 sit-ups. Something ridiculous. Yeah. Took me like three and a half hours to finish. Um, other people were in much better shape than me right, right. and other people either quit or finished worse than me. It was like 10 of us. Right. Next week, there's only four of us and we start learning how to take falls. That's like, a, that's like the true tough. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was learning how to take falls and it was learning how to run the ropes and they're not rope. They're like rope wrapped around wire. Oh, so oh, you bounce nice. off the ropes and you got black and blue marks all up and down your sides because oh, you have to hit it hard. You know, people really do think it's fake and you know, of course it's fake. Stage. It's stage. It's yeah. Stage is not, not fake. Fa- it, but then, oh, yeah. But you brought up, you brought, actually you brought up like tough enough I remember that show yeah. that was yeah. like I was watching it like when I was a kid and going holy fuck like they're, yeah. they're, they're, these guys are fucking they take athletes they started training they started having me train with um, uh, Brian O'Neill was his name we called him Bo but he was this old catch his catch can uh, Irish wrestler from from Ireland then to um, went to Lancashire in England trained mm. with guys in the snake pit which is like a notoriously br- brutal like boxing yeah brutal boxing and wrestling gym no like a lot of the gloves. guys yeah a lot of the guys Guys who um, uh, uh, Sakuraba in MMA was known as the Gracie Killer, and a lot of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu holds are old wrestling holds from when they were in Japan. They had European wrestlers do catch as catch 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 hand style wrestling, but Jiu-Jitsu the only thing they turned it upside down because you can fight off your right. back and you, you can in wrestling. Now, now that you're but, telling me this, I always used to say that comedy was uh, the cousin of wrestling, but now yes. you're telling me this. It, no, yeah, it's I not. No, so. no. I mean, the, it's well, it's physical pain instead of. I mean, you got the mental stuff no, too, I would but. Think, uh, Doing stand-ups a lot more like boxing is a hit and a miss out factor. No, it's nothing. No, I mean, this is not, no, no. Well, once no, you're like no, on, wrestling's yeah. a lot closer because there is some performance aspect yeah. to yeah. wrestling that's that's built in. Yeah. Whereas and boxing, the, there's also performance yeah, but you don't spend all day like, working out to right. get oh, to yeah, yeah. Yeah. where you have yeah. to. Perform. Well, it still yeah, is. Well, I mean, the open mics, doing multiple mics that you don't get to do rush, multiple wrestling shows a day every day. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it is in that sense, but it was like you know, I mean, it was physically. But also, there are people that just get up on stage once. I mean, they put me in the. They want me to train with these guys. They were telling me how important and toughness was after like two or three weeks i was the only one there and that's yeah. how i got the spot and apparently they had another class with 10 people who all quit right it right. was just like they needed someone in a match and they wanted someone who was going to listen and not quit it's it wasn't even a plan for me to keep doing it it was just um, get someone on a show who we can beat up do you feel your yeah. background from like uh when you were wrestling in high school right and doing the yeah the, the traditional version of that did it help like uh, um yeah uh, just uh work ethic and uh and things like footwork and just balance right. issue sure. where it's like you have been trained to use leverage and do different things and it's uh right. you have like kind of a background physiologically yeah well i, I wrestled yeah. in high school also yeah. and it yeah. is physically exhausting you also, roast, what, what? You, also, you also host a roast battle show too <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do you think I could get some long hair? One of these things. What's going on here? Hey guys, I'm having uh, I'm having selective brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, 
Just, not your seat. It wouldn't be elective, not selective. No, I selected. Someone selected you. <laughs> I selected. Well, you need to get your fucking weave on. I, yeah, yeah, but 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 I, I was watching. Yeah. I was watching like it was. It wasn't WWE, but it was like a you know it was professional wrestling. Yeah. I was watching, right. and those guys are moving and like throwing each other and getting thrown constantly for yeah. like thirty minute fights. Yeah. I'm like that is that is so physically exhausting. Yes. Yes. You know, NFL yeah. players say like the next day after Sunday it feels like a car crash. Right. Right. Yeah. Wrestlers are on the road every day. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor did a match at WrestleMania said afterwards it felt like a full football game. Yeah. 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 It, that it, was 1995. Yeah. Those guys yeah. take yeah. bumps and it's amazing. And you know everyone said you know because the steroids and you know the, and the, the, the drugs they did the, the drug it's right. crazy. I, I mean I, I was listening to um, Rogan's podcast with uh, Jake the Snake and he's talking about yeah. Andre the Giant and he's saying how he, the guy was his uh, the beers he was he he would drink like forty beers. Well, he night. also was had he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but um, the, the the intake they probably have when it comes to like right. yeah. well, it's kind of they, they probably have. feel they probably feel horrible the next day when they. I mean, yeah. they, they, they? they can get through, <laughs> well, yeah, they, they can know. get through it. That the alcohol is to get through it. But I know I've like there have been nights where I drink a lot and then I'm like, yeah, I can slam into walls. I can yeah. I can like roll around and be but crazy. Might, but the next day that hangover is even more. But they more might have severe. built up such a tolerance and they yeah. are they're on a different weight. Class. You do have a callus when you like taking yeah. bumps and taking falls. Like I haven't done one in years, but like taking a flat back bump is yeah. brutal for anyone who does it. But I just got used to doing well, also, it. No, really- that's true. They're so physical too, because like you even hear like like rock cats can eat whatever the fuck they want right. because the, the 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 training to be a rock cat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, at, that t- so. at the time, I, I had a fast metabolism and I was trying to bulk up weight wise, right. so I was eating four thousand calories a day. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe eating like uh, proteins or carbs. Mostly protein. Mm-hmm. Um, I would get like three or four turkey burgers, a bunch of grilled chicken sandwiches, take the nice. bread off, and just eat lettuce and chicken. <laughs> and if I was short on calories, I could eat a pint of ice cream because I was just yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, carbs more bloat you. The uh, the yeah. pro- yeah. the pro- Protein is how you bulk up. Like carbs can be a replacement for protein. Uh, for certain, yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, oh, I was, that, that carbs can be a replacement for protein. If you, wor- if you work out. Oh no. wait, carbs could be a replacement for protein. Yeah, like for oh, for certain. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. No, but. that's not right. <laughs> no, not for like bulking for muscle, but for bulking for like other sports like swimming, running. Sounds like my. Diet. No, it's yeah. it's for it's for energy. You, yeah, you you're yeah. you're only yeah. supposed to do it like. You're only supposed to do it like a day and a half before you do a really it's strenuous. An, it's an amazing activity. lifestyle that a wrestler lives. It's yeah. incredible, especially on the indie circuit. I mean, spending oh, yeah. weekends sleeping out of the bed of my friend's truck, eating wow. nothing but cans of tuna for the yeah. whole weekend. Is that what you kind yeah. of did for work until comedy? I was in college at yeah. the time? Okay, all right. Um, so, but I was doing on weekends. I was doing. I mean, overall, I probably broke even money. Early on, I was losing money because I went to school right. at Stony Brook in Long Island. Was we went so the yeah. cost for the Long Island Railroad to the city to meet where my usually I'd meet in the city. Uh, my buddy would drive me. To wherever the shows were, right. and we'd be in his truck. We I remember one night we were winning the tag team championships, so we thought, okay. "Nice, let's celebrate." We went to a Sizzler, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then we it was up in uh, there was a company called Atlantic Coast Northeast Wrestling Acne, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they had like they spread themselves thin. They weren't like good shows everywhere. They had like a New York company, uh, New Hampshire, Virginia, yeah. like all over, but none of them had a large enough audience. They should have just focused on one, right. but we. Went Went up, we we're gonna go up to New Hampshire. We were the New York guys, and we we're gonna win the titles in New Hampshire. <laughs> and we go up there, we win the title that night. We're sell- we're gonna lose it the next night. And we were out drinking, and they were like, "You guys are partying pretty hard, considering you have to be up tomorrow." We're like, "What?" <laughs> and they said, "The Massachusetts company has you defending the titles in Nantucket tomorrow at a one o'clock show." <laughs> so we had to like sleep on the bed of the truck, and they told us we were getting paid like it was like one fifty each for the whole weekend, which yeah. or which <laughs> is not for gas and all that was like that not not sizzler money. <laughs> 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 so we like get, sleep in the trucks. We couldn't afford a room, yeah. and uh, drive down to Nantucket. We had to take the ferry, and then we get there. And no one's waiting for us. We just start walking, and we hear the car horn. The we turn around. The guy's head out the window. Are you the wrestlers? Picks us up, drives us to a shed with thirty people. I had a sprained ankle that would swelled up like the size of a football the whole weekend. Too, I had ice on my foot the whole weekend. My buddy was driving had a broken arm like a dent in his forearm he's driving with one arm the whole drive his other arm's in a sling <laughs> so and then we do the match in Nantucket get back up to New Hampshire to lose the titles and they tell us up there in New Nantucket they said they'd have the money up in New Hampshire we get to New Hampshire they were supposed to pay us down in Nantucket so we got only a hundred dollars the whole weekend Oh my god oh at least you're walking right off <laughs> <laughs> you know why it's so weird because like like, like 
I just relate to some of that story, you yeah. know, like because you know doing comedy. Exactly, yeah. that's yeah. Like, it is a lot like comedy, just with yeah. the physical pain of it all. Right, so. but that's the part I can't relate yeah. to. That's the part. and even like sleeping in the car. Yeah, thing, you he, would find. Yeah, my buddy bought a bunch of meat from like a supermarket and it, like eat them. Yeah. Like we don't have anywhere, and he opened the grill of his truck and cooked the meat on his truck. <laughs> Showed me how to do it. I don't remember. I didn't learn, but yeah. it was like just how are the crowds at one o'clock in the afternoon in Nantucket. Like that was a. I mean, that was are there people there. That was. Kind of film our families and stuff. Right. Yeah. It, it, well, that's like, the thing about was wrestling. Like, like a family. It was uh, yeah. that kind of crowd. Like that's the thing about wrestling. You do have a f- there's a family atmosphere to it where people. Some of, I mean lot. some of them. There's other ones you do where it's all just a bunch of like dudes in their twenties yeah, yeah, who love wearing and, Austin three sixteen and right. Bullet Club and now they, Bullet Club shirts. Back then it was mostly Austin three sixteen shirts. And they want to see you, like fucking go. On yeah, and yeah it's, I mean it's different as a performer. Also, is like you know you're in front of the family. You're like this town sucks and they hate <laughs> you. And I'm playing the yeah. bad guy usually. Yeah. So so just do something like that. You're in front of these crowds that they know you're trying to be the bad guy. You got to like really go deep on that's them. That's so funny that you're a heel. <laughs> like, yeah. Like you have that. You well, when I started that. off, I was just a good guy who got yeah. my ass kicked by the heels. And, uh, and I had, they said I had good mic work before, but nobody trusts you when you're new. Right. Cause the heel kind of has to carry the match. Also, the bad guy's usually in control. Most of the match does good guy starts off. Ho- typical wrestling. He gets the crowd fired. The up. typical wrestling yeah. match will go beginning of the match. Good guy has all the advantages. Bad guy has to do something cheap to take advantage. Then he's in control. Then the good guy makes his comeback and wins. Right. That's a basic story to a match. Yeah. And, uh, so they don't want usually the bad guys more experienced because the bad guys kind of working the tempo of the match. Letting the know when the good yeah, guy makes a comeback. Rises and falls, yeah. You know, and, and you don't yeah. plan out, most people don't plan out every single move. You know, certain sequences you'll plan out, maybe where to put it like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you're kind of riffing and you riff a little bit, and it's usually the heel who's riffing. I thought The Rock was like the best heel. When he because w- because really when he first started, he came out as Rocky Maivia. Yeah, right. Everyone hated and him. Everyone hated yeah. him. Yeah, and and and, and think about it. the Rock is. I I would say I would think he's the most talented person on the microphone. Yeah. ever. You know, oh, yeah. I, I I huh. <laughs> The most electrifying man in sports oh, entertainment. Okay, no, I thought you said something. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get anyone to quote that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want me to do it now? Yeah, why, 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 not? why not? Let's all just the most it. electrifying <laughs> man in sports <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> I am Noam Chomsky. I, as the rock. <laughs> I am the Rock. I am Rocky Maivia. Yeah. Because he came out. If you smell what the Rock is cool. <laughs> <laughs> he came out wearing the feather, like weird. And he, no one yeah. makes the Rock legitimately like, like the greatest heel. Is like. Because Stone Cold was the greatest face at that yeah. generation, right? And The Rock would sell the stunner better than oh, any like yeah, no one else. Yep. Like nobody, he, this guy would fucking like literally. <laughs> he would look like Mateo Pasquale in the Climat Lounge, <laughs> <laughs> and like fucking, he would like just have a spasm. Oh yeah, and, and made yeah. him the best fucking. And, and 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 Stone Cold was so popular. The Rock became. Stone Cold times like fifty, right? Like immediately too. And also, he was uh, he he never wanted to be a heel. No, McMahon had to convince him. So he was like, they were like, it, Rock, he was like, I don't I don't know how to feel. About well, his it. father was a face, right? The uh, Rocky. Yeah. Well, Johnson. his father, they did, he did both. He did both. But it was All just right. by the nineties, it was seen as his dad was this legendary figure. Yeah. And at a certain point, you can't really be. Do you a remember heel. when he was on uh, the, 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 he was on that seventy show? Yeah, that was like a huge deal. Yeah, it was like oh fucking a wrestler on like a tech, like fucking network television yeah. show. Vader was on an episode of Boy Meets World. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, there's always been a long history of like WWE. Wrestlers are like moving into horror films or bad B comedies. Or actor stuff. Well, I mean, because especially it's, as it's gone on, it's become a launch much pack. more of an yeah. act. It's a yeah. Chris Jericho called a show business boot camp. It, you, you're yeah. improving, oh, yeah. you're doing everything. It, it's right. almost yeah. like a Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Where they've produced a lot of A listers. Look at Batista. Yeah. And when I first yeah. saw Batista, I was like, this guy's gonna be a great wrestler. He's gonna be around forever. And then all of a sudden, he's in the fucking comic book movies. Yeah. Killing yeah. It. yeah. yeah. You know, John Cena, I, I never even liked him as a wrestler. And he's he, in comedies. He's now. Yeah, funny. Yeah. He's great. He has yeah. timing. And right. Kane was in a horror movie called yeah. Cena yeah, Weevil. He was in Black Christmas, I think. Well, I don't think it was. Cena Weevil. Well, he's been in a lot of horror films because they are they're incredible looking people. Right. Like, like, yeah. uh, like you Bill, use, Bill Goldberg was in a, a was like a Christmas horror movie, uh, Santa the, Slay. The great, yeah. the great Khali was in. No, he was. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That the Longest Yard had a bunch of wrestlers in it. So Cold shits himself in that movie. He also drops the end ball. Yeah. Oh yeah. Several times. 
times. I've several times. He enjoyed, but, he enjoyed that a little too much. Yeah. yeah. But Kevin yeah, Nash was hilarious in the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. The Rock, the, though, is like a superstar actor. Yeah. He's, a, he, he's, he's probably the biggest movie star in the world. I, right. I never liked his acting until I watched the movie Painting Game. Uh, yeah, pain and gain. Yeah. Pain and gain. Oh, yeah. Pain and okay. gain. Okay, yeah. he was good in that. But then I watched him like you know. Well, when he first movies. debuted, also when he came out with the feathered boa and every yeah. the boas and everything, he was. I mean, that was like in the eighties what everyone loved. But in the nineties, the crowd got edgier right. and wanted more nasty. So they saw that as like a goody goody. That's why Kurt Angle to be a bad guy yeah. just told everyone to drink milk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and even I mean, depending on the crowd, there was one uh, when I did shows near Philadelphia or in Philadelphia. It was always like these hardcore wrestling fans, and they booked me on these shows that were like just barely above backyard shows they were basically backyard mm. shows it would be like with an and the, but they would do crazy hardcore stuff they would like break fluorescent light bulbs over each other's head throw yeah. each other on chairs barbed wire all that stuff which was not i had never done that before sure. and but i had an actual wrestling but i was when i was right i was top 25 in the country in my weight class in my age group it was like yeah. it was out of like a couple hundred yeah. but i still bragged i mean pro yeah, wrestling yeah. i'm like top 25 in the country top five in new york state <laughs> and uh, so we uh, we use that to get like these hardcore fans. If I just come out and say you suck, I'm going to steal your girlfriend. They'll be like, yeah. <laughs> oh, so they, they would like if you're like with families and all. I would just go out and say every man here wants to be me. Every woman yeah. wants to be with me. Boo! They'll hate well, you. The for cliche, being the cliche heel I, stuff. I, I, yeah. You told me this cool, this funny story where you one of your bad things was that you had this big fat girlfriend. Yeah, Didn't that you? was <laughs> that was uh, that was a uh, they gave me the character. They just called me and said, we have this character and we want someone to play a guy who's a chubby chaser. And that's, <laughs> and they wanted me to be the heel. So I had to be like condescending. So I filmed these videos. They would play it building up to my debut. Yeah. It was just me saying, I'm a real man. I like real women. Not like all of you who look at, go to a beach volleyball game to find your girls. Yeah. You can find me at the all you can eat buffet. Like, <laughs> that's a funny fucking character. I was yeah. talking about how Snooki is beautiful and all of you, <laughs> all of you should be ashamed for making her feel. And yeah. it was, so I was like attacking the people right. for what they, but it was in Southern Ohio. Oh, it was sure. the furthest I traveled for wrestling. And are, are these videos still around? No. I deleted them, thank God. They're awful. <laughs> um, but so th- I come out, my entrance music was Fat Bottom Girls by Queen. Nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and they have this like big girl who's like who's supposed to be my ring valet, and it was just like a girl who wanted to hook up with a wrestler. <laughs> so she's like just happy to be backstage, big wide-eyed and everything. I like have to babysit her, basically. <laughs> and we so walk cool. out, and I got cheered so loud. Oh, really? And I'm supposed to be the bad guy. Yeah. So the, we're supposed to do this like sloppy make out kiss for the crowd to like hate yeah. but they're cheering already I'm like they're just gonna love that more so it looks like, like I now pronounce you men and women yeah so we start walking down the ramp and I lean into her and I said I don't think we should do the kiss and she's like we're doing the kiss <laughs> <laughs> That's New York but, boy. But, that, yeah. but, but that's so funny where they were like, you go to this place where they're like, yeah, we're fat too. Like, yeah, exactly. They were like, for them, I was like Casanova. It's Southern Ohio. <laughs> Honestly, that is a great, that's a great character. Like WWE, like, yeah, that would be a hilarious. Well, that would be so funny. I mean, if it was a good guy, it could be woke. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It, right. That's either very either progressive. Of, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, well, they, like, every woman is beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's like 2009 because it was written I, I, as a heel. I, 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 the only time I really started watching wrestling again was when they made a character, Adam Rose. After uh, yes. Russell Brandt. And I, I, George, like, I remember like, they tried to make him like progressive, but it was not enough. Like, like, like a it was, they did like Adam Rose was like a rave party guy. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. was his character. It was basically, yeah, it was Russell Brand. I watched recently um, uh, the last couple of years. I feel like they're getting. Uh, more interesting wrestlers like I like uh, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, I think he's very yeah. good. Yeah, um, uh, Roman Reigns was always good, but there was a period um, right around like earlier this decade where it, it, it just didn't feel like the old. Like I know that they, I know, I understand that McMahon was going for PG. Yeah, and he was going for. He understood. That you ever watched? It was the, a younger fan base, but it's mm-hmm. always been a younger fan base. It's always been um, thir- uh, like 13. you know eight to thirteen. Yeah, but then all of a sudden earlier this decade. Like all the you know all the thirteen year olds grow, grew up, and so this is that was the time to really expand and become the attitude ever. I think Linda McMahon being in like politics, they didn't want that yeah. to be right. associated sure. with her. Sure. Maybe I'm not, that's what people that's online will say. But Linda McMahon still like runs the thing. She's in the small. She runs the small business administration for I, Trump. I also yeah. hear that they're not the closest. Like Linda McMahon, and Vince. McMahon. Well, isn't like Vince? They, they say Vince is gay. They say too, he's right? or he's yeah. like, I haven't heard yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember when he cheated on her with Trish Stratus. 
yeah. she was in a coma. I mean, how did that marriage survive something like that? Yeah, that's, that's well, remember crazy. when he died, he came back to life. Like now, he's like the real Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That, one of the greatest clips is when he brings uh, Linda McMahon out in, in a wheelchair. <laughs> yes, and smacked. Down. Yes, <laughs> and then she's like in a coma, she's standing there watching, and all of a sudden she stands up out of the coma, <laughs> and it's like, what? Linda McMahon's alive. She's out of the coma during. The he's two, the greatest the character. Two thousands, he yeah. carried the show. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, because Austin left. He's, Rock was doing movies. Right. Uh, you still had Undertaker. He's still, Devil Vince McMahon. In like 2006, yeah, Shawn Michaels came back as religious, and right. it was Shawn Michaels <laughs> right. against yeah. Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon. And Shawn Michaels' head team partner was God. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they did a full entrance yeah. with just a light <laughs> and nothing, and the light just follows down the ramp as God comes I into the that. ring. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, I for an eye, two for a tooth. <laughs> It's so fucking funny. He was the like best. Like Clint Eastwood roasting Obama not being yeah. there in a chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who was the guy with, with the analogies the- again? <laughs> Who was oh, the guy with the, the hoe train? Godfather. Oh, the Godfather. Godfather. That's yeah. so funny. And then he became too. the real guy. And then he became the Godfather. Right? Yeah. No, he became religion. the good father. The good, good father. father. Right. He joined, he joined the uh, yeah. right to censor yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. WWE was getting sued by like a parents group. <laughs> it was so called PTC, the Parents Teacher Council or something. Ooh. And yeah. then so they made a group called the RTC and they just parodied the fact that they were actually getting sued. So and and, and then what did the hoe train become? Didn't it become something? No, he just got rid of it. They, got rid of it. The Godfather became the good father because it was not appropriate to do that anymore. Steve Rocker. Steve. Even yeah. Richards. They had, Stevie Richards. Had the whole train. <laughs> they had so many smart Great. angles that they went through, and then people would just protest. It, it, was, yeah. it, it, it sucked, you know? Like, yeah, it's supposed to be ridiculous. Like, well, even now, just so like ridiculous. last... There's a guy yeah. called Rikishi who put his ass in his right. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year, there was uh, Jinder Mahal's Indian wrestler was feuding with Shinsuke Nakamura, and he had, yeah. Jinder Mahal has these two like, little Indian guys that are his like sidekicks, True. and Jinder Mahal's just doing nothing but making hacky Asian jokes. Yeah. But he's the heel. He's being bad, unfunny on purpose, and his little Indian guys are laughing along with him and the crowd was chanting that's too far really, really? yeah uh, <laughs> and people were like had to apologize for oh, it Jesus it, it was always like even like back in the 80s it was always based on like an Italian wrestler versus like a Spanish wrestler yeah and if they went to like you know like in a, you know uh, they, New York yeah then, then the Italian, he'd be the heel and the other guy would even be, do that regionally I'm from New York City and I would go to do shows in upstate New York and yeah. tell the crowd I'm from New York City the only part of New York and that they, really matters <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there was, and I would. Uh, so I was working on a traveling carnival for a few months, and uh, the guy who I was working with, he was from upstate New York. This is why you love Chris Crespo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the origin. Yeah. Well, yeah. yes, but yeah, that was every show. He would talk about how he's from the area. He'd make local references. Right. We'd be in different towns, yeah. and he would have been to all of them. He'd make these local references. You're just, I'm just like all of you. And then I would say, yeah, the reason you look up to him is you feel like you could be just like him one day. The reason you don't like me. <laughs> Is because you know on your best day you couldn't be half the man that I am. <laughs> that's <laughs> and, great. That's but also that's the difference. Like a crowd like that, kind of a carnival. Cra- I mean, that's a little bit original. It's not just like this town sucks. But uh, yeah. yeah, in Philadelphia when they're doing the hardcore stuff, my character was to be like good. Like yeah, I would, yeah. guys would come out of the ring with a steel chair, and I would leave and get counted yeah. out because I didn't want to participate in this garbage wrestling. Yeah, I was trying to prepare for this podcast, you know, like, looking up like histories and stuff. I was shocked at the WWE, like that like, whole circuit goes back to the mid forties. I'm, I'm you know, shocked. You know, you know I, I really like I really like your uh, additions to this podcast. Yeah. You really make it whole. You know, <laughs> he's really he's a real whole. The yeah, that's the, the thing. I, I'm shocked that he prepared for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's the only person ever. <laughs> he does research on my podcast. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't even do research. Like, wait, what? Wait, that's wait. Great. <laughs> uh, I, I love the gimmicks though. And, and uh, who is that? Who's that guy with the long hair? He's a recent. He's a recent guy. He went against Kane not too long ago. Why? You talking about like last couple of years? Yeah, last couple of years. Yeah, I don't know. What yeah. Is it Bray Wyatt? Well, yeah, maybe. The, yeah. the so Wyatt. The Wyatt. He does like that uh, is what it is. There was yeah. this one match where it was him versus Kane, and he had this long hair, and he was wearing these like kind of like loose fitting clothes. Right. And you could tell that it was Jesus versus the devil. Like they, they, <laughs> yeah, they that's made, Bray Wyatt. It was, I think. The, yeah. it was Jesus versus the devil. Like this yeah. is crazy. Yeah. I was high, and I was like, I'm watching Jesus versus the devil <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> they, they have uh, Braun Strowman, right? Yeah. And yeah, he's, he's good. Yeah. I think he's like the next big thing. 
And uh, apparently, the, like the Big Show and a few of them are taken under his wing, and they're showing him how to wrestle. Yeah. I think he's like the next big wrestler. He's, he's really great. Yeah, yeah. Hell, he's like only like in his twenties. Yeah, he's only been wrestling like three or four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be that next level. But that is something similar between wrestling and comedy. I'd say is that the only two kind of art forms that get held to a standard of like you know a character can say something on a wrestling show and people ask you to apologize even though you're in character. Right. And yeah. same thing in comedy, no. but in a movie. No. Right. Leonardo DiCaprio didn't have to apologize we're, for playing a slave owner. We're playing, right. you know, yeah. I, 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 Wait a second. Uh, okay. We were talking about this earlier. It's uh, uh, Dice, right? Yeah. Dice had to apologize. Like, the reason why Dice never apologized when he, was, when he first came up during the 80s and 90s is because one half of the crowd would stop liking it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, his crowd loved that character. Yeah, it's, it's a, the, so fear, if, the fear of breaking the fourth wall. If he turns yeah. around and he goes, no, this is just a character, everyone's like, oh, that's the illusion's up. That's it. Yeah. Done. Let's all go home. We're not going to watch him anymore. Yeah. Right. I was right. saying with the you were giving me the analogy of like a, a comic and also a wrestler. There's also a third I can think of like professional provocateurs. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, like Miley Annapolis or like. I Wait, which one? What, what's oh, no, he's talking about like yeah, guys who are like play like real life heels. Yeah, like, so yeah. he's like, come on, like. But I wouldn't call that. Be, I wouldn't call that an no, art be form. A professional yeah. a perform- you, you mean like yeah. you mean like internet trolls? Yeah. Um, well, you can't speak at a college, right? As a as a like a commencement speaker, and then to go, I'm in character. Right. Yeah. Right. They well, asked well, you I've to. That. I've seen him do it. Well, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, but wait, the, oh, these are specifically oh, meant to yeah. entertain. Yeah. These like. Yeah. Talk about Milo in the Apples. No, that's not what he's not there to entertain. No, he he's there to be talk. there to entertain. He's there yeah. to talk. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like Ben Shapiro's not in character. You go to a right. pro wrestling show. It's like going. It should be like going to a play. A yeah. Yeah. Play. Yeah. 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 A live, I call it a very painful live action theater. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, that's it's, it's a perfect way to watch. That's perfect. Yeah. Right. It, like yeah, there's a physical aspect to it, and it's and it's awesome. Well, like, and, and, it's, and it's so awesome. and so is comedy. We're like we're all in character. So Stone Cold Steve Austin when he comes out and gives the middle finger. There he goes again. Uh, <laughs> Stone Cold Steve, when he comes out and goes, gives the middle finger, he's not literally giving the finger. First off, it was always a good I was listening to Stone Cold's podcast, and uh, he would get messages like, hey, why did you waste all that beer? And he'd be like, I didn't win. And he actually answers them. He goes, I didn't waste any beers. I would have five. And uh, like, yeah. like, why would you even answer that question? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, why just drink? And- Com- comedy's in a <laughs> weird spot where it's always... It, it just, it's just, it's you're always going to be questioned for what you say on stage, no matter mm. what. Yeah. And it's never, and, and and people, it's never, it's never. You, you, you could, t- you know, you're never going to be. Like, Carrot tops a character, and if he got in trouble, like mm. it's like hasn't he like, for <laughs> for stuff he said on stage? I think, like, yeah, like crazy. Everyone has. You know, he's like, never. It's it, everyone's hold to a standard, and it's right. weird. Well, I think some yeah. of it is also yeah. now kind of trust is gone. Where it is usually would be a comedian, you could kind of get a free pass standing because we assume you're a good person. Yeah, no. and now like after like being shocked by something like Cosby right, and like these yeah. other people who you so many men but who you but it's interesting because because I feel like yeah. you do, I feel like you don't assume that they're a nice person you just assume that they're a general scumbag yeah, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. they're not they're not a monster but like, I just mean, it's different to hear if someone's doing a joke about killing someone if an actual murderer says that joke exactly it's right, not as right. funny it's interesting, right. yeah. it's interesting. But, but but if you make a joke about uh just being a general asshole like yes. that, then that's okay like i was listening yeah. to um apatow on uh jim and sam yeah and uh, p holmes was on with them and they were talking about the Louis situation, and now and Louis made those jokes about the Parkland kids, and they and they said that you know Carlin used to do jokes that were very you know these crazy jokes, but P Holmes was like, well, we knew that Carlin was a good guy off yeah, stage, yeah, exactly. And I, I'm like, well, what is it? What, what's the difference? It's still an artist. If a, if 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 a uh, you know if a, if an artist draw, draw, um, you know has a painting, you're not going to be like that painting sucks because the guy who painted it is an awful human being. Well, I think it's it depends painting. on what they're painting. No, well, it no, depends. No, no, no. No, wait, wait, yeah, no. but but that right, but but that's I agree. I agree with yeah, you in yeah, theory. But that has been yeah. the case. Like, there's plenty yeah. of artists. Pablo, Pablo Picasso yeah. was a fucking horrible person. Yeah, horrible. Right. Yeah. But if Picasso was making paintings of abusing women, it would be a little different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, this guy actually did that, so maybe this painting's not well, so good. So then you, the money be worth it. <laughs> so you're saying that because Louis would make jokes about masturbating, so it kind of makes it so that some of the, not even that. I mean, he could do whatever he wants. I'm not offended yeah, by yeah. anybody. I'm just saying, like, Pete, I yeah. may not react. As 
um, to somebody who's like actually harmed people doing a joke about that's like there's right. about a victim uh, in some way. It's tougher for me to appreciate the joke coming from someone who I'm not. Not that I think he means it necessarily. Yeah. It's just I wouldn't let, like I love San Hope saying those jokes. Right. Uh, but San Hope is hasn't like done something actually not bad. Not that we know of. Not that we know of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, right. I, and that's part of the reason right. why everyone's question now is because now people don't know about everyone. Yeah. Right. Can I, say, yeah. can I just say one thing? We saw the post of Joe Comedian should have been uh, trapped in a closet. What are you talking about? What What's that? Mean? Trapped the, in what? The, the R. Kelly joke I made. What, you made a joke. Why are you bringing back? We're not talking about Doug. Yeah, yeah. We're like doing a podcast with Sal Cole. We're talking about Louis C.K. and Doug Stan, and then we bring it back to you. What are you talking about? The joke was like how all these people are rightly so really enraged R. Kelly, as they should be. And yet, there are a lot of people on Twitter calling for R. Kelly's uh, trap and cause to be banned and to never yeah. redistributed. Oh, yeah, and the joke is like, give a 10 minute standing ovation to the pianist. What? Well, That's there a, are R. Yeah. Kelly songs okay. now that are being questioned. There's like 40 of them that are really creepy yeah. because yeah. he does talk about like underage. Well, there's also, I mean, just because I can't enjoy something as much as I did before, I'll never blog or protest either. Right, right. Like, there's also, but I also understand, I think there's a difference between like a painting and a singer or a comedian because you're actually seeing the person say it. Yeah. yeah. Like the painting is kind of like, this is painted by this person. I've never, don't know what that person even looks like. Right. The, like you're not connecting it to the face. It's like uh, Brian Singer is a terrible human being. Right? Yeah, I mean, he's a, and everyone, no one ever brings that up. But he's a he's a major pedophile. Yeah, uh, but if as I post all those minor pedophiles, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, all pedophiles are all pedophiles, minor pedophiles. Yeah, are minor <laughs> pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> major pedophile. Yeah. I'm a full grown adult pedophile. <laughs> I only, I'm only a pedophile to uh, right. grown men. <laughs> but you know the X Men movies. If you enjoy them, I'm not gonna be like, hey. Well, it was know. like that uh, John Wetland thing that came yeah, out recently, right. Right? Yeah. and I have a picture of John Wetland in my uh, my room, yeah, and I'm like, awful. I want to take the picture down. I have been too lazy to take it down. <laughs> like I really yeah. don't care that yeah. much. Instead, you just put a picture of some kids. Uh, <laughs> 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 Look, at least now it's complete. Yeah. yeah. Even the X Men thing, it's like you're not seeing Brian Singer. Right. He's just directed the movie. Yeah. Or even all. like an actor, it's like you're not seeing you're not thinking of them as the actor yeah. you're seeing the character they're playing I think singer comedian is tough because it's like it's that person yeah and when you know something and not oh. not that Louis is like a murderer or rapist he's not no, but, yeah. it's not. and I hate when people like group it's, the image together but right. it is still it's like you know this guy was going up to women he, who worked for him and asking if he could masturbate in front of him. Right. That's kind of shitty. Which is wrong. Yes. It's like it's like watching. House so of, I've been told. It's like watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching House of Cards. It's like why not? Yeah. If you if you've never seen the series, watch yeah. it. Well, I think I think Louis. I think but when you watch like when 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 that Kevin Spacey came out with that video recently, oh, that's awful. that it's like no, I'm not going to support that. He's not. Yeah. He's he's clearly talking. He's clearly defending himself in character. Yeah. Like he he had like this loophole. Yeah. That's how crazy the Kevin Spacey is, really. Yeah. Like, that is so funny. Watch- <laughs> they do that like on Christmas, too. <laughs> <laughs> that means what a he has no family. <laughs> like, well, did you fucking he's see his brother, uh, on, his brother like, on, inside, on Inside Edition to talk with that shit? I didn't watch it, no. I have a soft spot for brothers. I thought, you think Kevin Spacey's gay? <laughs> his brother, who's like a strange one, Inside yeah. Edition in a dress. Did you say? You say? What, what did, did you just say? Do we think that he's? No, gay? I'm saying like, like Kevin Spacey's like obviously a rapist and stuff like and like he's homosexual. Yeah. I'm not equating the two. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying his brother won an Inside Edition. You think Kevin Spacey's gay? So what's his, his, bro- his brother goes on Inside Edition wearing a fucking dress. He might be trans. Yeah, yeah. You, you he's don't not know. trans. He identifies as a man. He said in the interview. Uh, well, yeah, he did, that, he identifies as a man who wears dresses. Yeah, yeah. Me had nothing to wear that day. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was crazy when Kevin Spacey was like, you're a rapist. Like, okay, I'm going to admit I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, just <laughs> right after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a hail mary. Yeah. You know? Honestly, it was the best hail mary you could have thrown. Like, yeah, it it was, it really, I mean, it wasn't good, but it was the best one. Like Hallelujah! You, you fuck kids. Well, I also fuck men. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, you know what? We forgive you. <laughs> But it was just yeah. weird. That, see, that's the difference. Is that like during that video, it's like people are like, "Well, he's a really good actor." No, he's defending himself. Yeah. in character. But the shit. I didn't hurt. watch it. Did you watch it? I watched. Yeah, it. I, watched so yeah I did. It's so creepy. It's it is probably weird. super creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, it was I, more. I, it was too just much. Bizarre. Just the idea of it. it, it what, I, I, it was even my skin weird. crawled. He made that like kitchen look like the fucking set of the show. Did he? Like, how much money he prepped to make that like bad video? What yeah, else? but what? he did edit. 
uh, through iMovie. True. So that's like, really? fu- yeah, like uh, you can see the. Can you tell by watching a video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can kind of tell. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, it's iMovie, and like he probably edited himself. That's oh, like, sure. Well, it's what even I'm, creepier. Who, 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 <laughs> so who would do it for him? Who, who's like someone probably like watched one the of raw, his... <laughs> Someone probably watched the raw footage of it. Was like I'm not touching. Yeah, this Thelma shit. Schumacher was not available. Yeah, right. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> not... Shopped it around. Yeah, and right, the worst part about fucking Kevin Spacey is he asked you what do you think of the video afterwards. Right. But it is. It's way more interesting. I mean, like what you know, Louis did was was na- was really gross and nasty. But it is more interesting to hear him try to defend because he's a yeah, comedian. Exactly, right? he does things where he's breaking the fourth wall all the time. Well, it was when, a, when yeah. does Kevin Spacey break the fourth? That wall? was a, yeah. yeah, that was also like on Daily Show. Louis went on to talk about Tosh. So it's like you know he kind of became. If you like Louis, you want. It, I think in general with your favorite comics, like I'm when something comes up, I'm curious what Doug Stanhope thinks about this thing. That, so yeah. when a thing comes up about Louis, I think you want to hear well, what Louis thinks. You about ever hear it. that Stanhope thought it was about him? Like, you ever hear that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. And then actually, there is a picture of him like with his dick out with Sarah Silverman there on stage. Yeah, yeah. Like so, like I mean, like I don't know it, it, the it, Louis thing. Obviously, like if that that's like you, you, it's a very it, yeah. It's very hard to uh, it's it's hard to defend. Hard, Let me say he didn't do anything wrong. I have a question: Would you defend Joe Hanley? Joe, Joe Hanley? Hanley? Yeah. We yeah. but now I'm hearing that Joe Hanley never took out his dick. I was there. He did. Oh, he did take out. Yeah, his he dick. did. It came um, in, like you, you saw his thing. Yeah, I'm prevalent. I mean, I've never. Is that a good or a bad thing if someone describes your dick as prevalent? <laughs> <laughs> it was in the room, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I fucked this guy it, last night. His dick was prevalent. <laughs> <laughs> did you just say that Joe Hanley has a big dick, Mateo? Is that what you just said? I'm just saying, I'm just saying it was, it's, it's in the mic. I'm just saying it was. It, it wasn't a bad sign. Well, I'm, I'm having. I'm having him on my show in a week, so. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's another thing. I think. Um, I'm also having him on not in the most flattering sense. Of course. Like, you know, yeah. like we, have a, we have a full lineup of rapists next week. <laughs> uh, Joe Hanley, Brendan Jones. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But I, you, guys, you guys are bad. You guys are, <laughs> I'm the whole of No, I, I think, I think uh, you know, I think, you know, like, it, it, there should be, like, I was listening to Janine Garofalo defend Louie. Yeah. And, and the interviewer was like, well, he took, you know. Well, like, when the Christian right was the most offended in the right. country, there was a road to redemption. Right. There's forgiveness. Um, and uh, right now, the most offended in the country is, you know, like, we, we all know, and not that they're terrible people, but the progressive left. And there is no road to redemption. It's just like, please be quiet and go away. I think there's equally outrage above left and right. I'm not saying that there there isn't. No, I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just saying that the the most prevalent version. I just saw a camera's a face of memory like a year ago. I posted about how they both remind me of each other, the super liberal left and the super religious right. I said, at least with the religious right, you can still make Jews about gays and Jews. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, yeah, it's, true. it's true. Uh just that the, the uh progressive left, there's no road there's no road for forgiveness. Uh like I'm not saying like see but then there's like I'm on the fence where like whereas like Bill Cosby and Kevin Spacey, there shouldn't be yeah, done. Like right. there yeah. should be no like that's well, it. that's pr- they should go to prison. Done. Yeah, yeah, but, but, that's, 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 but that's, that is technically their road to. Yeah, redemption. but you're, you're not fucking enlightened if you go. They shouldn't do anything. It's like no, we have a ju- we have a judicial system. Right. When you break the law, you break the law if, and you if, go to if jail. Kevin yeah. Yeah. Crime, yeah. Uh, it's, if Kevin Spacey goes away for 15 years, comes back, maybe in 15 years from now, I'm like, yeah, maybe he should be. Yeah, but because no, like, no, 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 let me just say, you cannot reform someone's sexuality like that. Like, maybe a murderer or like a, a thief, but like, that is ingrained in someone's psyche. Well, well you speaking sure. from experience. Yeah. Then, yeah I, well, <laughs> well, I was very forceful. <laughs> I, no, I think that like, if somebody, I mean, Whatever what Cosby did, he should go away forever. Even if he even if he was forty, like he's gonna yeah, go away well, forever. Crimes. He's gonna go away forever because his forever is two years. So, yeah. so well that too. That, that, but that's his part crimes. Of it. I mean, we're talking about forty accounts of rape. Right. His his crime. He that's it. It's, it's a life yeah. sentence. But if it's not a crime that puts you into prison, then there should be some other way. It should be a shot of redemption. It should be a. It's like Little Broncado, uh, the guy who played the uh, Colonial during the Bronx Tale. Yeah. He went away. Uh, did it? Did his time? Did uh, I think eight to ten years? I don't remember the exact sense. Got out of prison, and uh, people are like, "Well, like he shouldn't act ever again." And it's like, "Well, he did his. He paid his. He paid. He, you know, he, he paid his price." Yeah, yeah. of course what he should. He again? I, I can't remember. Sorry. Uh, he was. Um, he was part of a robbery, right? Part yeah. of a robbery, and a police officer barged in. Yeah. 
uh, like they do. Uh, an, act, an off-duty cop, and uh, his partner shot the off-duty cop. Seems like if you get if you get do like an armed robber. Armed robbery seems to be like if you do it before you're famous and become famous, you're like this guy who overcame something. Mm, yeah. yeah. I didn't Mark Wahlberg have something yeah. like Mark that? Mark Wahlberg yeah. beat up Booker a T, the man. wrestler. Yeah. There's like if you. I didn't know about Booker T. <laughs> Booker T was uh, MVP. The wrestler was in jail for armed robbery. Like I fucking love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, if you get arrested for something before you're famous, or even if you like people at Dog the Bounty Hunter murdered someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, that, that, yeah. Was, that was manslaughter. It was terrible. Yeah, manslaughter. But yeah. still, like, you're, if you do you're it before you're famous, you're, <laughs> <laughs> if you do it before you're famous, you're almost like you overcame something. But yeah. if you do it while you're famous, never you're no, not famous okay, anymore. Well, Wahlberg, people are starting to figure out. He's a, something's gonna come out on him. It's because people are starting to figure out that story. And, I, and like every video I see of Mark Wahlberg on YouTube, I watch a lot of this. Well, clip. that's his. Uh, what is it? Of, what is uh, every like acting clip of him on YouTube is like. Like at least 14, 15 comments going. I bet you that Chinese guy they beat up back in ninety four yeah. likes this fucking. Yeah. Uh, That's the movie. strange thing about Louis is that how, how much of a target he's become by the people that were fans of him. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that was the thing. It's like like people were these people like worship this guy, and now he's he was the face. I remember reading an article. He was the face of progressive. Uh, the prog- progressive. They never. Movement. They obviously never watched his stand. Even like the rape jokes. Yeah. They would pe- the rape joke controversy it was like here's Louis doing examples of good rape jokes. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. like, exactly, and yeah. it's ridiculous. He went on Saturday Night Live. If he did that monologue today, he would be out. That, that, that's it. People, that, that, that's they, would, like, they would be like, "Oh, well, he clearly touches kids." Right? He, he's a yeah, you know. And he did that monologue. I remember people were on the fence, but still, the media was like, "Well, he said this." That, well, that's this, it's that, it's know. convenient for them to defend jokes when it's when like it's on there. Well, it also yeah. seemed like you know the guys who did the dirtiest stuff were always the nicest people. It was like clean comics right. end up being rapists. And right. Stuff. right. But then, like you know, Louis jokes about being a creep, and then he's kind of a creep. Exactly. So now, right? But he's more. Be- I think yeah. he's more weird. Than he is. It's, it's, it's a fine line. I just, yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah. creepy. I mean, when you're well, when you're the boss yeah. of a show and you go to one of your actresses and ask if you could jerk it, off in front honestly, of them, it is it is like it's predatorial. Like like because he was he went for women who he thought, oh well, this this woman might. Do, let me do this. Whereas yeah. if he went up to some woman on the street, then she'd have no reason to think like, "Who the fuck are you?" You're just well, I, yeah. I mean, but ter- these girls yeah. are thinking, "Oh well, he's in my bi- he's in the same career as industry, me, yeah. it, same industry, and he's above me. Like- so it might actually maybe it'll be good if I do this." So he was looking specifically well, for these women. Well, Sarah Silverman said um, they used he used to do that to her and her sister, who yeah, was dated. They right. But they were saying that was when they were both new and started. When he got more famous, I guess he didn't. Maybe he maybe he did, but it was like she said. It seemed like maybe he didn't realize that now you can't do that to people below you. Sure. Right. Yeah. Which is which is somewhat fair, at least. Yeah. Like, like yeah, it did seem. It did seem like that to some extent because there's that one story of him asking the girl, her saying "fuck no" and him saying like "sorry, I'm a weirdo." He did, he did yeah. back off. I've they heard, did, I heard no. stories that weren't even mentioned in the article from like just someone I know who's I've like aunt was a reporter yeah. and he like did an interview with him and then he asked if he could jerk off in front of her and she said no and he just said, "Oh, okay, I misread the situation." Right. right. Yeah. It's so, such a weird. Yeah, it was weird. a weird one because they did say yes because it's yeah. almost like. In that situation you just mentioned, it's like that's a situation where maybe a guy asks a girl out for dinner. Yeah, his way of asking out for dinner is, "Can I take my dinner?" Yeah, but there is like a fucking difference between like going, like, "I want to go out for dinner," and like, oh, "I want course. to jerk off right here." No, if, if, but, but that's sure the reporter right. would be like, "That's very sweet, thank you." But, but or like asking, going in for or going in for a kiss. It's like it's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, like I'm not really into you that way." That then, like yeah. you know, she might, it, she, she might be a little yeah, weirded yeah. out a little bit, but she's like, "Okay, like you know, yeah, I don't want that." But right. his uh, his uh, his idea of going in for the kiss. Is saying, hey, can I take out my dick and start jerking off? Because you know what, though, and uh, you know, and and again, I don't think he's Bill Cosby, and I don't, I don't think he's Harvey Weinstein, but. I could see someone being a girl that's not I, I, if a girl is like not like experienced yeah. and who was maybe like you know like this like a young comedian who's like you know, you know just starting out a guy turns around to you and says something like that you're probably taken back because yeah. they, 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 they they you know they they're not around you know like you know it's just it's very odd I'll never forget when Margaret Cho asked me to eat her pussy <laughs> right. and I was like oh. I was watching the Golden Globes I thought it was Margaret Cho Cho the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching I was like Wow, I thought she was like funny at one point, and then it was Sandra. Oh, so it's just oh, a weird. Was, yeah, no, that was terrible. That was I thought I thought she was awful, and and every and I was reading like you know the Facebook comments or whatever people or the uh, statuses people saying she is amazing, she's gorgeous, no. and then I watched some of the monologues. It was terrible, it's so bad. Then Amy Poehler came out and did something.
something. And she, yeah. and I gotta be honest, Amy Poehler's never been funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like Amy Poehler. I like she Amy was Poehler. funny yeah. in Mean Girls when she played the, fa- uh, the, the, the father, the mother, <laughs> the mother. Right? She played the mother. Yeah. The you know, but yeah. um, that that's terrible. And then they took away, you know, Kevin Hart from the Academy Awards. Where I think undoubtedly, I think he's in, he would have done a good job. Oh, oh yeah, of course he would have, because he's actually funny. And know. he's also he's like he's not edgy. No, like that's the right, weird yeah. thing that he's the he's too offensive. He's the most likable comedian of all time. Well, that's why everyone they had to likes bring in, who, who was the for the Golden Globes. What's her name? Uh, Sandra O oh and Sandra uh, Andy Samberg. Andy Sam, I, I like Andy Samberg. He, he couldn't they have gotten someone a, like they, you already have Andy Samberg, who's the most cookie cutter, like not offensive person on the planet. Can't you get someone who's a little bit? I something? loved when Gervais. Was yeah, just, that was right. great. I thought that was amazing. I thought he did a great job. Yeah, like you can balance it out. I, I get that you want to have. I someone liked when easy, Chris Rock but... hosted the Academy Awards in two thousand three or two thousand four. Nah, yeah, yeah, go yeah. On. That was great. Yeah. Uh, Who's like, Jude Law? That was the, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then oh, then and Sean Penn got all offended. It was like oh, Jude Law. Oh, okay, yeah, right? yeah, 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 I yeah. like when a host ruins the night. Right? Yes, because yeah. I think they deserve it. And the, and the think, night's going to be nice for the people who win, no matter what. They don't care I, or I, lose. It's nice so right. you're there. I there. hate those award shows. Me too. The most pretentious bullshit. And recently, because Trump's been in office, I stopped watching. I used to like them. I, like, I never I used, even watched them. I I watch them. It's never. But when I started doing comedy, and my mom or my dad would talk about if I get a TV show, I win an Emmy. I'm like, I have. N- I don't think I would go. Right. I mean, I guess I, if it was an obligation, or just say I went. But it was like I've for never you. once in my yeah. life thought I'll go for you. I want to go to the you Oscars never had or that, Emmys. Like, dream, oh, right? yeah. That's not the dream. That's Being not the on the red carpet has never been a thing. I've well, ever your bro- your brother. Uh, remember, we were, we were watching yeah. uh, and we were doing the other show we used to do together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were watching uh, your brother. He, he won, was on stage at the Emmys. He's won yeah. a few. He he's won, won yeah. three Emmys, and he has been. In the shot, he was in the shot with John. Oh, I get to go on stage. Like he, he was he yeah. was on stage with his wife, uh, Joe Rombie. What a couple. Of Joe Rombie. Well, that that's for, a, those are day those are daytime Emmys, and also camera. <laughs> it's for camera work. <laughs> but which is which is war, all, I mean, which is only, cool. The but. only award show I legitimately like is the Oscars. That's it. I, I watched the Academy oh. Awards. I'm interested to see what wins. Yeah, the, the Oscars is like you're watching the Oscars. At least there's some. I, the, yeah, I feel connected to it. Some when I'm the Golden Globes when yeah. I was watching that. I'm like, why do you need I all love these when, fucking? Even though I've only ever watch the opening monologue if anything because it's yeah. a comic and it'll be funny yeah like i've I watched the espies yeah, not anymore, i've though. watched the espies opening uh, awards oh, yeah. right, right. even I, that i watched the opening ceremony and i just watched the list of the winners why well, i have to hear someone say it so I, her name is oh right, sandra sandra, sandra, sandra oh, right so so she, or, she then she did some heartfelt thing at the end of her oh, thing God. and it was so fake it was such a fake it, heartfelt yeah. thing. she's like I, we we made it like we're well, like you just did a japanese thing. prayer thing <laughs> you yeah. put your hands oh, together we <laughs> Uh, he does that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do every, I do that in real life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I do that. I actually do that myself. But, uh, every Asian I was, talks. I was watching a, a couple of years back when McConaughey won the Academy Award. I was watching it. It was him and DiCaprio, so I was interested. I was, I'm a fan of those two guys, you know, yeah. uh, for very different reasons. <laughs> uh, but I was watching it, and uh, McConaughey won. He went up, and he thanked God, and the entire fucking room went silent, right? A year later, Meryl Streep goes up and thanks God and then goes, thank you, God, Harvey Weinstein, right? And the room applause. That's funny. Uh, just applaud. Like, and it's, it's, it is, and like, there's, there's this weird, you know, that's why, that's why that whole Weinstein situation is so odd in Hollywood. It's yeah. just the weirdest Everyone situation. Knew. Hollywood's very weird. Oh yeah, it's a it's a very Holly weird, am I right? right, right, right. <laughs> you guys are not breaking any ground there. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it, it's it's crazy how they, they it's so, it's so incestuous and weird. Well, what's acceptable in uh, in Hollywood and, and what's uh, acceptable after it comes out is different. Yeah, like because right. they all know they all know about this stuff. Like they, you can't tell. Like even the Louis stuff. Like we like as comics. About, like, well, I forgot it, it was some gay actor. I don't remember or gay comedian. It was someone uh, posted a thing about the Kevin Hart thing. He's like, ten years ago, Hollywood. Like when Kevin Hart was making those jokes, Hollywood was being bad to gay actors. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like Hollywood's got a history of being bad to being homophobic and racist. Also, <laughs> why isn't Hollywood getting fired from everything? Sure. Yeah. Like, and and also, it was so clear that he like he what he said was not that bad even for that time. Like like even. For for now, it's not that bad. What, what, what Kevin? Wait, who, you said Kevin Hart? Right? Yeah, yeah. It just wasn't that bad. What he said. I mean, he, was, he would beat up his kid if he were gay. 
I right. mean, he didn't, he didn't say that he would beat up a gay guy. He but said, but no, like, what's weird is that, like, if you beat your kid up in general, shouldn't you be de- uh, demonized? Right, yeah. Like, whether or not he's gay he has didn't nothing to do with the job well, because he, he's a child abuser. He lost the job because he's, he's a, homophobic. He's homophobic. Yeah, homophobic. like, in, in joke form. Right, right. Yeah, it's like. It's if, a joke. It was, a, I mean, yeah, he should apologize and that's fine. And the thing is, I think that has really blown over. But that was the weirdest. That was honestly the weirdest one. I th- People that, are more upset at the fact that, like, he said he would beat his kid up for being gay. For the yeah. Than just beating his kid in general. Like, turn around, yeah. I, beat my, I beat my son up because he got a D on his report card. Right. Like, that, wouldn't that be seen? No, that, no, no, no one have a yeah, problem. Yeah, that, maybe pick, like, maybe oh, pick, yeah, a diff, that, pick a different letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they would say, ooh, that old school, like, that you old, know, school. Yeah. old school mentality. And, yeah. Bernie Mac had jokes like that. Yeah. yeah. About yeah. beating, he'd beat up his son for being a faggot. That's yeah, like, yeah. Right. Well, Tracy Morgan, Tracy that Morgan. time. Yeah. And then, like, the thing about Tracy Morgan was that he apologized constantly. And Tracy Morgan's joke, if I remember, well, it was, like, just written by someone. So we don't know exactly what it was. From what I remember, it was that. He said he would beat up his gay son because he, if he didn't tell him he was gay, right, right. It right. wasn't about he beat him up because he's gay. He's like, if you're gonna be gay, be a man about it. And, and tell everyone, me. Yeah. Like, and like the thing with Tracy, the thing yes. about if that happened five years earlier, right? Because he was on Dirty Rock at the time. Yeah, if that happened five years earlier when no one like cared about Tracy Morgan. He was an uh, washed up. XSNL actor, right? Yeah. And no one would have gave a fuck what he oh, said. Oh, did people give him a hard time about that? Yeah. Because yeah. he, like, he was on 30 Rock. That, right, because that's not bad at all. Like, yeah. like he, he said, it, it, was it, just someone that's blog? That's funny. That's like, that's, yeah. like, that's an ant, it's kind of like an ant, Chris, anti Chris Rock line. defended him at first, like came out and was like, listen, Tracy does a crazy act. And then Chris act Rock nuts. started getting shit. And then Chris Rock was like, okay, I got to put out like, no, of course, Tra- Tracy Morgan's the most, <laughs> the worst person ever. Yeah, like, right, yeah. yeah. You know, Tina Fey threw him under the bus. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was the biggest star of that fucking Thirty Rock show. He's only yeah. funny about that fucking. It's a breakout show. character that show. And Al, Al Paul was funny. Well, I'm trying to remember. There's been jokes. I can't think of a specific example. Someone gets in trouble for, and it was just irony. And they were saying what Gosh. they people agree with. Oh, oh, yeah. an example. Um, the guy from MSNBC. Why? Who? What? Uh, the, there's a guy from MSNBC. Brian Williams. Yes, he made a joke. Not Brian. But Sam Cedar. I yes. think. Yes. Yeah. Probably Brian Williams though. No, it was Sam Cedar about the Ronald the pe- Polanski thing. Oh yeah, he made a joke. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something anti-pedophilia, but like ironically okay. being in favor of pedophilia or something like that yeah. to be ridiculous. Right. And people took it as if he was defending pedophilia. And there, there, there'll be people be like, something like that. And then there'll, exactly. there'll be people like like, well, he's on MSNBC and he shouldn't be joking or yeah. anything. Right. It's like, dude, fucking people can like say stuff, recognize tone. Oh, they kind of get. They don't. They don't always go after their own. Joanne Reed's got that show on MSNBC, and she got some vicious homophobic stuff in like blogs from years ago. Right, and she just said it wasn't me; it was hacked, and then they, like went away. Yeah. Well, how about how, how about CNN quoting Louis on Twitter? That's hilarious. When he deleted his Twitter three years ago, and they had written an article about it, and they like wrote an article years. about recently about his. You know, someone I, I obviously is controlling a Louis I, C.K. I, I, uh, ha- uh, troll page. I think, yeah. Yeah. And, and CNN is they're literally fake news. Like, right? Yeah. The, the, oh, CNN's the worst when they when they had the article about the most recent set. I mean, it's one thing for people to get outraged. Sure, like people can t- tweet about it, whatever. But the fact that CNN is writing articles about Louis C.K. It's ridiculous. Not even. And upset. You know, you know the worst? It's CNN. You know what's I, the worst mm. fucking part of CNN? What uh, was the final straw? I stopped watching them. When a Charlie Hebdo massacre happened, yeah. the, the whole day, they were fucking having Skype conversations on the news with members of Al Shabub and Taliban members. To talk about the yeah. terrorist attack. How the fuck are you contacting the Taliban? The worst. So it was like years before it became like everyone was saying fake news. It was like 2006. Yeah. I just remember CNN had an yeah. interview with, with John Cena. They were just talking about WWE Pro Wrestling. Wrestling and steroids and wrestling, and maybe it was it was that maybe it was at the Chris Benoit, that's maybe like two thousand eight or no, so. yeah, two thousand seven, yeah. two thousand seven, yeah, yeah. two thousand eight. But yeah, they do an interview with John Cena, and WWE released the raw uncut footage because the way they edited it was bad. So in the actual interview, full interview, what they they asked him if he'd ever done steroids, and he says absolutely not. But everyone's going to have an opinion about it no matter what. And right. I can pass every drug test, and yeah. people are going to think whatever they want. So I can't say I haven't, but no one can prove that I have. In the actual interview, they go, have you ever taken steroids? I can't say that I haven't, but you can never prove that I have. Yeah. That's what they did. Oh, There's God. A- and WWE released the footage. And CNN yeah. never aired the special right. again and apologized. Yeah. But still, that's dirty. By the way, this is the same ne- uh, news network that also reported on when Vince McMahon died in a limousine. Right. <laughs> so- There's always been a stigma with the media and wrestling, with pro oh, wrestling. Yeah. They've always Absolutely. gone after each other. 
Well, they've, I mean, people, serious people have believed wrestling is real for a long time. Oh, yeah. Like state athletic commissions, which is kind of like good for wrestling because you get money and you yeah. get stuff. But if a state athletic commission actually commissions on pro wrestling, you're admitting it's a legitimate sport. Do you remember and when they did up until like the steroid trial in the nineties, up until like the mid nineties, Pro wrestling was treated as a legitimate sport by the U.S. government. Yeah, that's yeah. when he, that's when McMahon went on trial. It was like it's just wrestling entertainment. Like it was great. Well, he used to drive Bob Costas, Costas. crazy. And, and the and point like, about Bob Costas, who the like he was this prolific broadcaster. Why was he driven so crazy? I think I also I, I personally and I like Bob Costas. I love Bob Costas. Uh, and, uh, I think it kills his legacy. It does. How fucking Two duped times. he was, and he sat, sat, sits down with Vince McMahon, and he gets fucking and he watched an interview, and Vince McMahon acts like a fucking like nut job jerk off. <laughs> yeah, right. But like Vince McMahon wins that fucking interview. It does. Like he just wins, wins. that argument. He wins that argument because like Bob Co- he, he, he goes, "This is the same network that uh, uh, has the Sopranos." <laughs> Right. Would you actually talk to Tony Soprano? Yeah. Right? And it's fucking perfect. And Bob Cos is like, I, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, you know. And, and the fight about McMahon, he's always well spoken and he's always well researched. Is there a bigger loser booth than Bob Costas and Tim McCarver together? <laughs> and, <laughs> when Tim McCarver got the fucking ice thrown on him. Oh, it was Deion Sanders. Sanders. Put in Joe yeah. Buck. <laughs> yeah. Put in Joe Buck in there. Yeah, put yeah. Joe Buck in there. Yeah. Why not? Tim Joe. McCarver and Bob Costas with a sideline reporter, Joe Buck. <laughs> Well, well <laughs> Costas, had, Costas was great with the Olympics. He had the fucking eye, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Eye. And he, he so vain, and he was so vain. He didn't want he didn't want to take a night off. And the, and NBC, I remember reading it, NBC was like, Bob, your eye is disgusting. Like, he's I mean, like, no, I'm fine. And people, and he ruined his career. They got him, and he, he not didn't ruin his career, but he's he's, he's recovered since a little. Bit. At the time, though, yeah, definitely he's heard games him. on the MLB Network. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. He, should, he should have worn an eye patch. That, that was so cool. he was terrible. Remember he was. All, it looks so weird. Yeah. And they put a bunch of makeup on there. He was awful. You know, fucking. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> I would love it. I've never seen Joe Buck as sideline reporter, but now imagining it. He, he was. No, he did do sideline. 90, yep. 96, yeah. I think, during the World yeah. Series. He was the youngest broadcaster to ever call the World Series. Yeah. No, that's Sean McDonough. He's called at 28. Oh, he's 93 with well, the how Blue old Jays. Buck just, they're only a couple of years apart. Buck was, ima- his, Buck was in his 20s. Yeah, I just imagine Buck an announcer going, let's uh, spark things up and go down to the <laughs> sideline with Joe Buck. Right. <laughs> hey. So. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm ordering a hot dog, and uh, <laughs> he's the worst. I like when. Uh, What's oh, with Tyree? With Tyree, that one year he caught it off his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he made the greatest catch of all time with yeah. the boon. Although over. we'll see you tomorrow night's a great one. Well, that was good. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah we already had the fucking lines written out for yeah, him. He, you knew, know? he was like, waiting for that yeah. one. His dad did that twenty five years. When Boone hit the home run in two thousand three, <laughs> this was the call. Boone, the deep left. This may send the Yankees to the World Series. <laughs> Boone, the hero of Game they, 7. And his brother was right next to him <laughs> yeah. when making that call. Brett Boone. Brett Boone was right next to him. You could hear Brett Boone kind of... And then they show Boone. Brett Boone's crying in the booth, which is the most pussy moment I've ever... <laughs> like, ever. And, like, Buck kind of, like, looks at him, like, you know. Uh, he, he really is a bad broadcaster. I used to yeah. like him when I was a kid. I liked him in the 90s. I liked he, him. I mean, uh, I, he had the uh, the Layrits home run. Uh, yeah. Back and I still, at the track, yeah. at the wall. Oh, that's a good call, though. Tied. But that's like that's a really good call. Like, he yeah. actually, I do, I like you know. him. I just uh, I like making fun of the fact he has like zero charisma. He, he has, has no awful charisma. charisma. He's but uh, when he did the Joe Buck show on HBO, oh, Jesus, that, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, Artie yeah, Lang. Artie Lang. that yeah. was great. And he wants Joe Buck wants to be Letterman, and everyone yes. kind of knows that. Yeah. And like he, he he wants to be a comedian, and he's just he's so terrible. He's not funny. Who, like, does, he, who does he do this sh- the them with now? Because McCarver, it's not McCarver. That's what John, John Smalls. Smalls. John Smalls, yeah. right? They also had. The thing is, early, yeah. when McCar- so McCarver had personality in the '90s, right? And then he became an old man. So, yeah, yeah. So, so Buck's not supposed to have personality. Buck's supposed to be the commentator, and he's supposed to have a color man. Yeah. He so, had- so he got this guy. So now he has this old man in the mid 2000s, and now he and now he gets John Smoltz, who should be a commentator. Yeah. He and even be, in, and in football, a, Troy Aikman is decent. He's right. good. Color, oh, but right. yeah. The yeah. worst booth he ever had he was has, with Verducci and Harold Reynolds. Oh, they were terrible. They were awful. But like. Late McCarver, though, like 2012, before he, like, retired. losing it. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver couldn't even call the fucking apocalypse. Yeah. That's how bad they were. Yeah. They would be well, so fucking oh, I just boring. I grew up just listening to John Sterling and Susan Waldman, so to me, Joe Buck is, like, the greatest of all time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a good point. It's like, you're, you're listening to John Sterling, and you don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. Yeah. You listen to the radio, and it's like, oh, yeah. 
That one's deep to right field, and it's caught by the second baseman. It's like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? Be like, and by the way, uh, Gleyber Torres uh, just I, struck out. I've heard, right, John, right. I've oh, yeah, heard it'll be after the play's over. I've heard John Sterling do a home run call, right? Like, it'd be like, fucking, like, uh, it is high, it is far, yeah, it like, is caught. At and the then wall. it just gets caught. <laughs> caught. Yeah. Uh, and he does the whole thing. He really is bad. And, and his home run calls. He's gotten better. Someone must have told him that it was a it was a nightmare. Well, I, so so he yeah. so now he doesn't do the. It, he only does it as high as far with Judge. You know, like yeah. basically someone has to wail a ball. Really get for, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always said Which, this. Well, first off, the reason here's the thing too is that he doesn't watch the monitor. He watches the game, mm. and they always told him watch the monitor. But he's like, I'm old school. And uh, yeah. the thing is with him is that he has a great voice. Right. So yeah. he's a talented broadcaster. But he's an absolute buffoon. <laughs> so yeah. he's re- and the Yankees have this idiot in the booth, and then the yeah. Yankees, and then they have. Then what do they do? They team him with this other fucking right. moron. Get some eye candy, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Susan Waldman. This 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 other just the worst. There, bro- there was a game I was listening to this past season where they were talking about her coat for five minutes. But five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'm wearing this winter coat. Yeah, like, oh, I I love this. Coat, it's so warm, but I honestly, it's very cold out. They like, are well, terrible. yes, I, uh, I'm wearing a nice coat myself. I have uh, hand warmers and, uh, <laughs> and the all, home run calls are just the wor- my the, dad. Like it started off with like simple things, a bomb from a rod, right, George Juice, one El Capitan, Yabino. and my dad said to me the other day, he's like, "What's Glaber Torres' home run calling?" And I just like deep breath, is like, ah, like it? a good neighbor, Glaber, oh, <laughs> like, a good gla- yeah. like a good like a good Glaber Torres is there. <laughs> that is the call. That's so bad. <laughs> right, right. So some like, like what does he say? For Didi Gore is some uh, uh, oh, uh, yes, indeedy. That one's and then, okay. And then he sings the age of Gregorius. Oh yeah, that's really bad. I like I, the only one I do. I, I do like All Rise. I like that I, one. Yeah. That's, see, he has simple. A, he has a few. Good, that, he has a few good ones. And back in the day, he would only do the good ones. So yeah, the Gian Bino, the Bantino, the current yeah. baby burn, yeah. Uh, yeah. Georgie Juiced one. Then he had to come up one for every player. So, so and if you listen, if, if, I don't know how you would do this, but if you listen to a, uh, a radio broadcast from the 90s Jeter didn't have a call back then. no he didn't he, and then you do El Capitan he yeah did, he did that, one, that was like yeah that, not, but l- even that I, I don't even that. think that started right when he became captain yeah so, it was later. so he, he started that like he started doing it for everybody you're right which was so you're, dumb you're, you're, sends a text he would message only do the good yeah. you're on he the mark to share Pat, Pat's right in the uh, in the uh, late 90s when they were winning right uh, he only did a few he only did a few the home run calls and then they kind of pressured him not that they kind of pressured him a lot of fans actually liked the calls yeah. and he was like okay everyone needs a home run call right. and it was ridiculous he he and I don't Most I'm not, of them are I'm not a big Michael K fan Cano, the Cano one was good Curtis uh, Granderson Robin something K- sort of uh, grandish oh, so the grandy, grandy man what, fan what was the one the he Stanton one's almost racist <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> John Cody. that makes it better though yeah, yeah. no West to bond what I, yeah. and the and the funny thing is Waldman leaves the booth at in like the third seventh yeah. like <laughs> John, what John Cole John Carlos stands when it's John Carlo, leave the gun, but keep the cannoli. <laughs> 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 Right, he, he makes reference uh, to the fact You're right, that one is kind of racist. How are we doing? Oh, we're, about, oh, we're, about we're on time. Hour yeah. Hour 15. Hour 15. That's no, because we have to get down the combo, yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah. It's about time. No, no, it's about time. Okay, yeah. 8.17. Okay, yeah. guys, do your plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Mateo. Uh, I'll be uh, uh, Tommy plugs. Farrell producing our show on... Um, uh, February. We're 9th. on the 420 one, right? This is important. It's crossover. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll get to that in a moment. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> February. Well, am I not on the 420? Were you one? actually going to get to that one? Mateo? Yes, I it was. Oh, You're going to get to their show. All right, go, 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 go. Yeah. Uh, uh, February 9th, Far Rockaway. You can look at my Instagram at, at Angry Bastard, spelled to Quentin Tarantino way with the E, to find the information address for the next show. That's the Quentin Tarantino way. I thought it was a hard R. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, no, we're, do, we're doing one for 420. Uh, the same, I, we don't know what location yet. I assume it's be the same place. I assume so. I don't know if that's going to be correct. Right. And uh, also, February 28th, it'll be on the Dominic Fogarty's Culture Review Show at the Cricket oh, nice. Cave. 
My plugs are also inspired by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> 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 uh, at Real Mad Marin on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, at Comedy Fight NYC. Instagram and Twitter for the Comedy Fight Club page. Comedy Fight Club every Sunday night. Live at Lucky Jack's in the city. Soon to be moved to the stand. And every Tuesday night airs on the Gas Digital Network. And you can listen to the Comedy Fight Club podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And February 2nd is Capital Wrestling in New Jersey. Nice. We've been, I've been working with them. I'm part of the Danger Sanctuary. <laughs> What's that? I'm the official ring announcer for a group group called the oh, dangerous they're I'm like sorry. a cult <laughs> yeah they're like this cult group led by timmy danger who heals people we come out and we like heal people in wheelchairs so they can walk again <laughs> and, uh, and they uh they healed chris crespo because they chris was hit with a pile driver someone hit chris the pile driver back in the summer and they healed his broken neck uh, <laughs> um, not his hands. That's just. <laughs> that's, that's what he that's, I, when you said that, I'm like, tell me he's walking out with fake no. hands and fucking arms. <laughs> so and funny. then uh, they let me join the group when they healed me because I had a broken heart since they took my best friend. <laughs> And now I'm the official ring announcer for the group. And uh, that's they do shows once a month, and they're aired on YouTube also and uh, on Twitch. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, in February, we started doing comedy fight clubs in the middle of the shows. We'll have bat, uh, yeah, battles yeah, go yeah, up, nice. and we'll do matches. And those are available in the bonus content section of Gas Digital. Also, if you subscribe to Gas, you get into the shows for free. Awesome. There you go. So just look up Capital Wrestling, February 2nd is the next one in Hoboken, New Jersey. Is that Jersey. the one, that, what's his name, uh, Zach Amico, right? Zach Amico, uh, uh, he's the um, head of talent relations. Right, okay. He's hysterical. I, I see a couple of photos of him on Facebook as like this weird character. He once yeah. pushed me at the creek. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah, I was walking. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. You, you shook out the fuck on the way. Uh, yeah, it was my fault. I, uh, uh yeah, uh, my name's Pat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, I'll ju- I'll just uh, push the the Rabs Country Lane show uh, January twentieth tomorrow, uh, seven thirty. Um, we're not airing this one tonight. Didn't you say that you were? <laughs> no, it's the other one. Th- then oh right right. Uh, so so um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah right. I hope you enjoyed the show that already happened. Oh, like uh, uh, but, I, I try to produce a different product than Sal does, but I still yeah. I still fucking uh, tend to interrupt Pat during his fucking <laughs> plugs. <laughs> Not do your plugs. Not do your yeah, plugs. but I was like, hey, do your characters. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you let me do my character. Of course I will. Nice. Right, yeah, but he would not let me do my character. Yeah, no. He'd be like, well, let's go back to Lisa. No, oh, he's stumped. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Pat, yeah, what's yeah. on, Mike? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the 24th, I'm going to be in uh, Jersey. What, what's that show that we're doing, uh, Rob? The one that we're doing. What are we doing, Jersey? Up. We're doing it in Jersey. <laughs> uh, next week's is uh, yeah, it's uh, Jer- it's called the Jersey Show. All right, yeah. uh, I'm on I'm on a show this coming th- uh, this yeah. coming Thursday, Saturday. You can catch I'm us on uh, February 1st. I'm doing Brooklyn. What am I doing? You can catch Brooklyn us in Jersey comedy. Uh, February 7th, I'm doing roast battle against Pat, Luke Hussein. Pat, we're only kidding about the the plugs. Uh, nobody listens to this podcast. <laughs> also, uh, finally. Yeah, but I was trying to plug one show just to be like, what oh, yeah, I'm not show? really plugging. The, the Rams show. Uh, that's well, gonna well, oh, Rams. Yeah, Rams. Yeah, but that's going to end. One more. I know. Gonna, and, 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 <laughs> if, you li- if you like this podcast, subscribe to me on Let Us Be Idiots at SoundCloud. Yeah, if you if you like this podcast and you subscribe to Mateo and don't subscribe to this podcast, you're going to fucking get your ass beat. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who's the Russian guy that you have on your show all the <laughs> no, time? No, I'm <laughs> you're, you're, regu- you're your second mic. Yeah. Uh, the, that guy, I have contact with. He's not Russian. He's Romanian. Oh, okay. Last words, John Zombie. Like, Romanian. Let's get like salad, huh? John. Good night, everybody. Oh, let's, plug, uh, let's plug next week. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we're going to add both red, episodes red. tonight. I think we're going to add both. Well, right? what do you, what when, when, when tomorrow we, night, Rabbit's Country Lanes. <laughs> well, regardless of when we air this right, episode, two days ago, Rabbit's Country the January 26th, Rusty's Bar in Staten Island. Yeah. Like, come check it out. I'm Bobby, sure it'll be fun. I'm, I'm digging your professionalism. That was great. Yeah, you I know. know. So, yeah, we had a professionalism like, last underrated. Like, minute of the show. You're on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? Am I American on this podcast? I had no idea. This yeah, is you're amazing. Un- you're under- you bring a lot, too. Bring a lot, too. I do, yeah. So. Do I yeah. have five minutes from just us three? <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll sell my five minutes right now. Hold on. Let's <laughs> just... All right, let's do a post game show. Um, <laughs> uh, well, that was only kidding. You know? Yeah, okay. That was only You can get any hot beverage for $1 with the 7 Eleven app. Wait, any hot beverage? Any hot beverage you want for just one dollar. Even a pumpkin spice latte? <sighs> Even a pumpkin spice latte. But are you judging me because I'm a man who PSLs? Mostly I'm judging you because you're rooting for the other team. But also because you can get any hot beverage at any size for one dollar with your 7-Eleven app and you only get a pumpkin spice latte. Hey man, I like what I like. 
7-Eleven. Be game day ready. Plus tax where applicable. Valid at participating locations. <sighs> Hear that? That's the sweet sound of Minute Maid slushies at McDonald's. Turning up your summer with every sip, slurp, and ah. Get a small sweet peach, blue raspberry, or fruit punch slushie for just $2. Or get any size soft drink for $1. Price participation may vary. Limited time only cannot be combined with combo meal.